Hey everyone, Chris Knight here. Uh, I am a New York based portrait and commercial photographer and I am always looking for new tricks to speed up my post-production workflow and I recently came across a new plugin that I'm very excited about. Uh, it's made by a company called retouch for me It's a company that produces AI based plugins uh, for things like healing and local dodging and burning and global dodging and burning and matching skin and all these other things. I actually own several of these and I find them to be extraordinarily useful as uh, a starting point when I start working through my images. I also spend a lot of time working with color in my post-production process. I regularly like to use LUTs or color lookup tables as a way to shift a lot of the color in the image around. Um, and as an experimentation, it's always really fun to try to borrow some of the color from maybe some existing images or films uh, that I'm very inspired by, but there hasn't always been a really good method of translating one image to the other. There are some, yes, where you can kind of slowly match uh, values from one image to the other, or you can even use some of the plugins that are uh, based in Adobe already, but they aren't really able to let you duplicate them from one image to the other. And as part of what this program offers is the ability to create your own LUTs from the image and subsequently apply it to multiple images with that same color shift. So uh, I'd like to go ahead and dive into this and show you a little bit about what that looks like. This image here obviously has a little bit of a color tone to it already, but I've intentionally kept it relatively straightforward. Um, I've kind of removed any overly stylistic grade or any overly stylistic color from this. I have kind of this backlight coming in, but my shadows are relatively neutral color. My skin tone is relatively neutral color as well. So let's see how Color Match lets me play around with some options for what I can do to transform this image and add a little bit of stylistic color. So I'm going to come over to Retouch For Me's Color Match, and it brings up this window. Uh, what you'll see in this window here is my overall blend. You'll see the ability to access and store LUTs into the program. You'll also be able to access LUTs that Retouch For Me offers. So how I'm going to change this is I need to select my source, my reference image. So I'm going to come over here to my right hand side and I'm going to click on Load Reference. And I've got a handful of references here. Uh, it'll be relatively easy in this window to uh, navigate with what you're looking at, maybe by just selecting the image. And if you're on a Mac, you can press the space bar to bring up the preview and you'll see that I've got a handful of different stills from various images here. Um, you can navigate specifically to the one you want, or you can maybe pick one as a starter. We'll go with this one. I'm gonna go ahead and hit open and I can actually navigate to the different ones in the gallery with these two little arrows. So what I actually keep is a folder of uh, color reference images. Some will work better than others uh, that I can always access to and navigate around um, as, I, as I try this out. So you'll see that this is pretty saturated skin tones. There's some coolness down over here, but the blacks are pretty dark and the the highlights are relatively neutral, which you can kind of see here. What it's going to do is apply this very, very warm, saturated tone to the mids. Now, it's important to remember that this sort of a technique isn't going to differentiate between what is skin and what is not. And you'll often find that there are pretty big shifts in what it does to the skin. This is something that you can either live with or what I do is I will mask it out if it's too strong, but it gives me the overall color grade that I'm after and I'll tweak the color on its own. So these three sliders down here, really what you're going to play with significantly. Uh, the luminance is going to try to take the luminance values of the original image, this in particular being very contrasty. I've intentionally picked something pretty similar, so it won't be too much of a shift, uh, but you can kind of see as I really crank it up, it'll give me that tonal value that's much more similar. Now, if I take this all the way to zero, it'll keep my original tonality of the image. Sometimes this can be what you want, Sometimes you want to keep it relatively low, uh, and then other times you'll want to keep it relatively high. It really just does depend on image to image what you're after in, in, in the effect. Uh, the color is really where a lot of this magic is going to happen. At its full 100%, it's going to take as much of this color as possible, uh, and at zero or close to zero, it's going to be 
closer to the original. So you can kind of see as you crank this up and click through it, you'll reach a point, maybe you like it, you don't like it, or maybe you just want to pull it back a little bit. Um, pull this back a little bit, this back a little bit. And I think this is starting to look really close and really nice. You also can turn the overall blend up and down if these values tend to be a little bit different. Maybe the luminance is quite a bit lower, color's a little higher, and you want to make the whole thing a little stronger or a little, uh, little more subtle. You can affect that here, which is really helpful. So this lets you lean into it really strong. That lets you pull it back. Obviously, all a matter of personal taste. Uh, smoothing is something that I will change depending upon the image. What it'll basically do is kind of control that color roll off uh, as it goes through the image. Uh, higher values will look better on some images. Lower values will look better on other images. There's not really a set number you're going to want to keep. There's not really a set number you're going to want to keep for any of these in particular. But you can kind of see how all of the tones look a little bit more natural through here. Here's my original, and here's the after. You can see how it just makes that skin very, very warm. And I've lost that coolness to the image that kind of was there to begin with. It's definitely a lot closer to what we were going for. Now, when I hit apply, what it will do is it will bake it right into the layer. It will change it itself. So you don't really have the ability to um, pull it back directly. What you can do is do this on a duplicate layer, lower the opacity or whatever. That's absolutely an option for you, but you can kind of see how easy it was to give me this really nice effect. Now, I'm not always sold 100% on this when it lands. So like, for example, I find that I think some of the skin tone is a little bit too saturated. Uh, what I would probably do is I would dial this back where I need to. So I might take a little bit of a hue saturation and mask out the effect over some of those spots. It's a little bit too much. And I think that'll help me neutralize uh, some of this shift through it and just make it feel a little bit more natural, a little bit less heavy handed. I think this looks really solid. Let's take a look at another image and I wanna show you a little bit more of an advanced way to use this. So I shot this image at a ranch where they kind of store all of the saddles and I wanted it to look like sunlight was coming through. I've intentionally showed you an image that has very, very little color cast to it. So let's warm this up quite a lot. Uh, we're gonna go up to filter. I'm gonna go retouch for me. We're gonna open up color match. And let's pick something that's very, very warm. So I'm going to go into my load references here. Maybe something like this. Uh, I think this is a really cool color grade, something very, very warm and fiery with some pretty deep blacks. Now, in this particular case, it did lift a lot of my black values up a little bit. Even if I put this at a full 100%, you can see how it lifts the whole thing. I don't love this. Uh, what I'm going to do instead is I'm actually going to pull this luminance back until I get that really deep dark black down here. Something I'm a little bit more happy with. That's looking nice. Great. Uh, at the full color, you'll see how it's applying that really warm yellow to my highlights. It's giving me a little bit more red as it goes to the shadows. And you can kind of see where you want that to land for you. I think making it pretty high is cool. Let's see what the smoothing looks like low versus high. And you can definitely see how it makes that roll off uh, more saturated and lift it all the way through. I'm going to bring that all the way down. All right. So here's the before. Here's the after. It's definitely pulling a lot more of that from the image. Let me turn that luminance up a little bit. Let's see if we like that better. It's a little bit better there. Cool. Now, Let's say I have multiple images that look like this from this shoot, and I want to have this effect consistent as I go through the rest of the images. Well, what you can do is you can create a LUT from this. So I'm going to go to Export LUT, click on that, and you can see I already have one in here. This is a folder that I have stored. You can also export this to your default LUT storage folder within Photoshop, and that will make them show up automatically. I'm just going to show you how to do it to a regular folder on the desktop. 
Uh, I'm gonna name this something that I'll remember. So we'll call this uh, warm fire sunset, just to let me know that it's a very, very warm color grade. And I'm actually just gonna hit cancel here um, just to exit out of it. And the reason for that is so that I can open up um, the color lookup table in an adjustment layer. So I'm gonna click on my little half moon cookie at the bottom of my layers tab, and I'm gonna go to lookup table or color lookup. Click on that. And over at the very top where it says 3D LUT file, um, this is where you will find access to your LUTs. I'm going to click on this and I've got several of them in there already, but I'm gonna click on load 3D LUT. Uh, and I'm gonna to navigate to where I happen to store my LUT folder, I already have it selected here. And I'm going to select warm fire sunset. And you'll see that it gives me that exact same color that I just had inside. So, so why would I wanna go through this process anyway? Well, firstly, if you are dealing again, like I said, with multiple images, this lets you create a color that you can drag and drop. You can also store this for the future. So if you really like this color, but you wanna come back to it a little bit later, you can grab it here what you can do is separate the color and tone here a little bit, which I find really helpful, and mask it. So here it's just set to normal, but what I can do is I can change the blending mode to something like luminosity. That means it's only going to take the luminance of this LUT. Now the shift here isn't that big, so you're not gonna see too much of a change, but you'll see the big change if I duplicate this and I change the blending mode to color. Now I've separated it out into two different, different layers. And so if I want to take my luminance and bring it down a little bit, or I wanted to take my color and bring it down a little bit, I could do that separately. And that's super handy. You can also say, hey, maybe on this one little part of the image, I wanna pull it back a little bit. Maybe I wanna grab my mask and I wanna bring it a little bit off there. That's probably a little too much. Pull the opacity down a little bit. Okay, and so what I can do is I can selectively apply those components of color and tone. This works especially well when you're dealing with skin. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Here I have a pretty flattened out image. I wanna take you through what that process looks like so I can show it to you how I use it a little bit more extensively to give me maximum control. So I'm gonna go into Retouch for me one more time, go to my color match. I'm gonna to go to Load Reference and look for some examples that might work really well for this. Like maybe something like this or this. I'm gonna try both of them to see what I like better. It's okay. Just comb through these to see which one gives me a really nice grade. See, as you can see, even though there are good skin tones in the source image, it's just not able to differentiate skin tones in one place and skin tones to the other. We're going to mask them out separately. You'll also see how it doesn't really always translate tone uh, one to one. And that's because everything is shot very, very differently. Uh, unless the two images are very, very close in how they look, you're not going to find that there is a um, an easily translatable gap. So I like what it, the skin is looking like here. I think the whole thing feels a little bit too dark. I'm gonna pull that back a little bit. Uh, the other thing is you're not always able to know what a strong push or pull of the tone is going to do for the image. I think this ends up getting a bit too dark. I think the face gets a little bit too dark. And one extra benefit of making it a LUT is you can adjust the image underneath so that it processes uh, consistently above it. So let me show you what that looks like. I think this looks pretty good. I'm gonna make it a little bit stronger just so that I have it. I'm gonna go to an export LUT here. And we're gonna call this uh, Cyan Cinematic. Replace what I have here. And I cancel again. And I'm gonna go to my color lookup table, just like I did before, the bottom of my layers tab. Under load, go to load, click on warm, uh, click on cyan cinematic, and there we go. Now again, I'm gonna split this in two. 
So I've got one for luminosity and one for color. I would love the op option maybe down the road um, in a future version if it exports a LUT directly or creates a LUT um, as an adjustment layer, that would be awesome. Some of the other plugins they have um, create soft light layers for, for dodging and burning. So I think that would be very cool. Um, so I could take this, let's take my color down just a little bit, dial it back. And as I mentioned, I'm going to brighten up some of these values. I could come in, brighten it up underneath the LUT and maybe like there, 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 or the face. Maybe add a little bit of contrast maybe even. Cool. So that lets me lighten up from underneath, which looks much nicer, much more natural. And then right on top, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my skin here and I'm gonna shift it all. One of the ways that I'll normally do this is I'll even do something like a, uh, a color range where I select skin. Uh, you can also do a select subject or you can just paint it in manually, but let's go ahead and do a, uh, a color range selection here. And I've got my skin tone selected from the dropdown um, and I've got a pretty high fuzziness slider on it. So you can see it's selecting most of the skin. I'm gonna hit okay. And then I'm gonna to go to a hue saturation right on top of everything. And specifically in my reds and my yellows, which is where you're gonna find those skin tones. I can either add more saturation, I can take some away, uh, I can shift it into a more of a reddish tone, I can make it a little bit darker, kind of whatever you are after. And this is um, one way that I really like to come in and just make sure things are exactly the color that I want them to be. There's my before and after. It's a very subtle difference, but I put a little bit more red into those skin tones. Here's my before, here's my after. I think it looks very nicely graded and it's a relatively simple change. So there you go, a little bit of a peek into my color grading process using the Color Match plugin. I hope you found this useful both as something you can apply onto a singular image if you just wanna play around and experiment, but also as a way to create a color grade that you can apply uh, to multiple images really quickly and really effectively. Uh, if you're interested in learning more, check out the link below and uh, a special discount uh, if you are so inclined to pick it up. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I'm Chris Knight, and we'll see you soon.